one of the tricky parts of doing a valley is getting the angles right and I'll show you how I do it and of course there's other ways to do it but uh, this is what I found is easiest. You've seen we've already done some of the, the valley cut it so that I have six inches you can get down to four uh, and I've popped the lines. I've already got the angle started but it's basically what I do is I take you can be any color and you can use other things but this works best for us. I can do about highway traffic and airplane traffic here. So, what I'm trying to do is find the angle for this one. So what I'm going to do is take a squared off piece. Generally want it to be around 36 inches or, or more, but after 36 it starts getting kind of hard to handle. You might notice that I'm kind of cautious on this roof because the dew is still on it and it's slick. So if you got ice or dew, best be careful if you're going to get on it. I recommend you try not to get on it while it's wet. Alright, you want that part to be sitting straight so that it doesn't have uh, a miss. Be out of square a little bit by being over, so it's a little bit like so, even a little bit as straight as possible and then you want this point right here which is not the lip but actually the side of the rib to be even with that line that you popped and when you get that you can take a pencil and mark it quite often i just take a tape measure and the classic mistake which i've done bunches of times is you measure on this side thinking oh yeah this is what i'm gonna do but you don't because it laps over it's got to go down to the bottom of the other side so it won't change the angle this is 38 and a quarter angle so i know that whatever the length of this is i need whenever it's squared across i need to go 38 and a quarter up on this side and then pop a line or mark a line with a straight edge and then cut across which i'll show you that so what we're doing next is getting this out of the way so I don't fall off the roof. And measuring up the roof. All right, we'll take you to the next spot where we start cutting. Was, uh, measuring up that one angle. We're going to go down and move this one off to 243. Remember your mark, although you can mark right here so you can find it down on the side at 243. So what I'm going to do is measure from this end 39 and 3 quarters and do the same over here. That way we have this point and that point the same and you could pop a line across it but that's not what we're going to do. We do know that it's 38 and a quarter up on that angle because we took that squared piece which would be the same as going up there at 38 and a quarter but we're going to go over here from that point that we measured from here. You could do 243 over there. Same thing. It's just a little shorter for me to pull it that way. And then I go Ooh. 38 and a quarter up from that. I'm in my own shadow. I made a mark here, and it's got to go to that 243 mark over there. So what I normally do when I work by myself, 
Well, God bless your soul if you do work by yourself. So I get a pair of snips. Gotcha. When I cut it, then I take my chalk line. I thought I did. Remember, it's not to that mark, it's to the one on the side. And I kind of hold a little bit on the loose side so it'll pop down in there. There's the, the angle. Usually I use uh, straights, yellow handed, but you can use green or red. They just have uh, a stronger strength to turn left with green, I think, and stronger strength to turn right with red. Where straights are stronger going straight, but they can go left or right, just they're not as good. Cut down that one. Now one of the tricks that I was showing some people earlier is I lift up on one side and hold down the other. So I kind of encourage it to tear and then I use the snips to tell it where to tear. I got my snips turned a little bit sideways so I don't have to interfere with the metal pulls up I either cut my hand or it just getting in the way of working things. That part is done. I'll show you some more as we go along. When you're on the roof with wind. Uh, I don't want to do it at all. What I'm doing is putting it on the rib. That's repairing out the scratch. The existing metal and sliding it down as close as I can. got some uh, screws on two, two foot centers. I've seen it wider, but I've never had a roof get peeled off except for I had a, one, a tornado hit it. And that's it. Uh, then that's tree damage. The trees either make a dent or sometimes they cut through from the impact. Uh, a two foot center I've never had a problem so I'm not going to fix it. They want to stay at two foot center. Now whenever you're screwing this off, 
don't want to get real close to the edge. Like stay about two or three inches up. The reason is we're going to put in valley foam afterwards. And I'll show you how that's done later. But you just do the same thing. You don't have to measure every time. Now you know what that angle is unless somehow it changes back and forth. But you should have a straight valley where you pop the line on the sides and put it straight. So that angle will be 38 and a quarter all the way up on this one. And I'll check every one of them whenever I first start out. So I encourage you to be careful, but it's, you can do it yourself. Just be careful. And uh, when you got your friends, again, watch the wind. It can take both of you off the road. If it gets to be too windy, just stop. Better to live another day. Like, better to be a live dog than a dead lion. All right, guys. So now, we did valley where you're coming up. This is going down on the valley and uh, getting an angle that goes through. So what we had to do was determine that angle also. So at the point where it starts, which is over here, we got this lined up moving. So we know this is going to get to here. Then we got to measure down. we got to keep it pretty straight. Our line down below, and it's showing 35 and three quarters. So that would be how you would get your angle from the long side. 